Hello and welcome to this lecture student. In last lecture, we discussed the fundamentals of the logic verification, how verification is different from the testing. Uh, you can go uh, and see the basics there in the previous lecture. Today, we are going to discuss some other uh, principles that, that is behind um, the verification process, logic verification principles and the silicon debug principles. Okay, so this figure 15.6 shows a combinational circuit. It shows a combinational circuit with n inputs. Uh, to test this circuit exhaustively, a sequence of 2 to the power n inputs or the test vectors must be applied and, and observed to fully exercise the circuit. These things I have already covered in the you know uh, lectures of testing. That if you want to test a combinational circuit, 2 to the power n inputs are required in case of in case if you are talking about the test vectors. So this combinational circuit is converted to a sequential circuit when an addition of m registers is there. Okay, as shown in figure 15.6b. So, this is the combinational logic and this is the sequential logic. The state of the circuit is determined by the inputs and the previous state. A minimum of 2, of 2 to the power n plus m test vectors must be applied to exhaustively test the circuit in case of this m plus n. Okay, this also we discussed in case of the sequential testing design. Now, as observed by William in 1983, more than two decades ago, so when this book was written, now it is four decades ago, you would say. With LSI, large scale integration, this may be a network with n equals to 25 and n equals to 50 equals to 2 to the power 75 patterns, which is approximately 3.2 into 10 to the power 22. Assuming one had the patterns and applied them an application rate of one microsecond per pattern, the test time would be over a billion years. Can you imagine? To test these particular patterns, you will need billion years if you assume the per pattern test time as one microsecond. So clearly, exhaustive testing is infeasible for most systems. Fortunately, the number of potential non-functional nodes on a chip is much smaller than the number of states. The verification engineer must cleverly devise test vectors that detect any defective node without requiring so many patterns. You go back and see my previous lectures on testing vectors. You will see the clear detail is that how uh, you know uh, how we go how we go and decide that which approach we uh, are which approach is economical and which approach is beneficial for us. Whether I uh, go ahead with the logic of you know just the simulation table or the uh, I would say the functional table or the uh, truth table I would say. Or whether we can go for the simple OR gate, XOR gate and observe the test results to decide the test pattern. Whether we can go in case of the sequential circuit for uh, pseudo random pattern generation or we can go for the uh, LFSR. So these are the things that, that, that uh, is there when you are you know designing the test vectors for combinational or sequential circuits. So test vectors are a set of pattern applied to input uh, inputs and a set of expected output both logic verification and manufacturing tests require a good set of test vectors the test should be large enough to catch all the logic errors and manufacturing defects yet small enough to keep test time reasonable this 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 particular concept i also discussed in case of lecture uh, 11 12 13 14 15 16 this six lectures if you go back and see all the things are clearly discussed that how by reducing the test vectors you can in, you can reduce the test time how you can reduce the test vectors what are the methods that you can use reduce the test vector all these things have been discussed okay so directed and random vectors are most common types random test pattern generation discussed in the previous lectures directed vectors are selected by an engineer who is knowledgeable about the system their purpose is to cover the correctness sorry the corner cases where the system might be most likely to malfunction for example, in a 32-bit data path, likely corner cases that include following all zeros, all ones, one in the LSB, one in the MSB, alternating zeros and ones, alternating ones and zeros are random. These are the things that most likely to happen. So the circuit uh, could be tested by applying all combinational, uh, all combination of these directed vectors to the various inputs. Directed vectors are an efficient way to catch the most obvious design errors and good logic design. will always run a set of directed tests on a piece of RTL to ensure minimum level of quality. 
so now we are talking about the design na? we are not talking about the ic we are not talking about the device this is the difference as i discussed in the previous lecture design and device so in logic verification you test the design in uh, testing you test the uh, device itself so uh, in in case of the logic verification you will possibly see that what what kind of faults are there so what kind of most corner fault that that for the faults which is uh, which are more likely to happen which are more likely to occur you will test them uh, at the uh, you know uh, uh, design at, at at the design itself at the starting itself applying a large number of random or semi random vectors is a is a surprisingly good way to detect more subtle errors the effectiveness of the test vectors is measured by the fault coverage uh, and i already covered the fault coverage previously so i will not go and discuss ab about the automatic test pattern generation and manufacturing test we already discuss about this okay so uh, this section is saying that apart from uh, the uh, logic verification if you uh, if you take the automatic test pattern generation and the other things uh, in keep in mind then your uh, you know uh, overall logic or overall ic will behave correctly so test benches and uh, harnesses so a verification test bench or harness is a piece of sdl code that is placed as a wrapper around a core piece of sdl to apply and check test vectors in a simplest test bench input vectors are applied to module under test and at each cycle the outputs are examined to determine whether they comply with a predefined expected data set this also i discussed in the previous lecture you design a adder in case of uh, v, uh, i mean uh, vhdl and you test that whether at 1 microsecond addition is done correctly or not at 2 microsecond addition is done correctly or not at 3 microsecond addition is done correctly or not or you are getting the correct carry or not or you are getting the correct sum output or not okay this is how you test simultaneous uh, simulators uh, usually provide uh, settable breakpoints and a single multiple stepping ability to allow the designer to step through a test sequence while debugging discrepancies okay regression testing high level language uh, scripts are frequently used when running large test benches especially for regression testing regression testing involves performing a suite of simulation to automatically verify that no functionality has in advert in ad were rentally changed in a module or set of modules during a design it is common practice to run a regression script every night after design activities have concluded to check that bug bugs you know bug fixes or feature enhancements have not broken completed modules this is the regression testing that you should perform while designing your circuit okay this is a design this is a this is an example uh, you can uh, consider version control bug tracking are the other things in version control you know combined with regression testing it is uh, use of versioning that is the orderly management of different uh, design uh, iterations unix or linux uh, tools such as cvs or you know subversion are useful for this bug tracking another important tool to use during verification is a bug tracking system bug tracking system such as a unix or linux vex gna gnats allow the management of a widely variety of the bugs in these systems each bug is entered uh, and a location nature and severity of the bug noted the bug discovered is noted along with the perceived reason or perceived person responsible for fixing the bug okay now uh, next uh, we will move to the next topic of today's lecture this is the silicon debug principles the area of basic digital debugging was introduced in section 15.1.2 that we already studied in previous lecture a major challenge in silicon debugging is when the chip operates incorrectly but you cannot ascertain the cause by making measurements at the chip pins or scan chain inputs this is the major challenge 15.16.2 15.16.2 is talking about 15.16.2 let us go and see which figure it is referring to 15.16.2 this sequential circuit okay sequential circuit is we know very hard to test we already discussed this thing when we were discussing the sequential test pattern generation and sequential sequential testing 
so there are uh, a number of techniques for directly processing sorry for directly accessing the silicon first specific signals can be brought to the top of the chip as probe points these are small squares of top level metal that connect to key point in the circuit that a designer has had the foresight to include uh, before debug the over glass cut mask should specif specify a hole in the specification uh, over the probe pads so the metal can be reliably reliably contacted typical of these kinds of test uh, points might be internal bias points in uh, linear circuits or perhaps key points in a high speed silicon uh, single signal chain the exposed squares can be probed with a pico probe uh, in a fixture uh, under uh, a microscope during design the load of the uh, pico probe pico probe has to be taken into account by providing buffers if necessary okay the model 35 pro for ggb industries shown in figure 15.7 has a capacitance of 50 femtofarad uh, input resistance of 1.25 mega ohms and frequency response from dc to 26 gigahertz it can probe down to 10 cross 10 micrometer of window the die can also be probed electrically or optically if mechanical contact is not feasible an electron be probe uses a uh, scanning electron microscope to produce tightly focused beam of electrons to measure on chip voltages now this is see this see this figure ggb industries model 15 micro probe this is how you can you know uh, verifies the uh, logic at the silicon level and actually see whether uh, fault is there or not in case of logically no? similarly laser voltage uh, probing involves shining a laser at a circuit and observing the reflected light the reflections are modulated by electric fields so switching waveforms can be detected okay so what is the basic idea you are uh, you are putting a laser and the reflection is there of the light and those reflections are modulated by the electric fields so that you can easily you know uh, you know you can obtain the switching waveforms whether it is switched from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 in order to see that where the bug is there or where the you know a fault is there however the probing can be invasive the steam the stream of photons may disturb sensitive dynamic nodes yeah of course it can happen pico second uh, imaging circuit analysis pika uh, captures faint light emission naturally produced by switching transistors and hence it is non invasive okay silicon is partially transparent to infrared light so both lvp and pica can be performed through the substrate from back side of a chip in a in a flip chip package on a more uh, coarse scale infrared imaging uh, can be used to examine hot spots in a chip which may be a source of problems there are also liquid crystal materials which can be painted on to dye to indicate temperature problems at a coarse resolution yeah it if the location of the fault is known focused ion beam can also be used to cut wires or lay uh, new conductors down even with a plastic package parts the plastic can be carefully ground off and these repairs completed the reason for this kind of tool in uh, that normal in that normally is uh, any chip project time is of the essence and fib runs are quicker then frequent mask changes laser cutting is also possible commercial uh, providers such as mefas offer these services okay so debugging logic circuits will often involve extremely fast or novel circuits that are largely analog in nature in this case it is advisable to have a model of the circuit question available in spice okay spice is a very popular tool for you know and logically verifying the things whether your uh, transistor is behaving correctly or not whether your integrated circuit i mean suppose you, are, you have designed an op amp whether it is behaving correctly or not you can you know model it in spice and check it debugging analog circuits uh, various versions of spice are also there p spice h spice debugging analog circuits as with a purely digital circuits involves making an assertion and then trying to prove the assertion is correct this can be begin with a spice simulation and then progress to silicon measurement 
Failures causes um, maybe manufacturing, functional, or electrical. It may be any uh, at it may be at any stage. It may be a functional failure. It may be a manufacturing failure. It may be an electrical failure as well. So manufacturing failures occur when a chip has a defect or it outside of the parametric specification. Okay, debug can reject chips with manufacturing problems. Although uh, circuits sensitive to weaknesses in the manufacturing process can be changed to improve yield. As uh, will be discussed in section, we already discussed about this manufacturing test and process and yield. So functional failures are logic bugs or physical design errors that cause the chip to you know fail under all conditions. They arise from inadequate logic verification and are usually the easiest to fix. And electrical failures, so functional failures are easy to fix. Manufacturing failure, once your manufactured IC is you know uh, going the doing, uh, I mean it is giving the right, wrong result. Suppose in your in your television the motherboard ic uh, you know gets corrupted what your uh, i mean in case of today's television i'm not talking about the crt i'm talking about the led and led panels and lcd panels today we, we see in the market what your uh, uh, i mean the repair says repairer says he says that just change the ic okay so if your ic is faulty you have to change it so manufacturing failures cannot be you know uh, you cannot go reverse it is not uh, it is irreversible you cannot you know go and check uh, where the fault is and you cannot make it correct at the level of the manufacturing but it can happen in the level of the functional at the level of the functional failure electrical failures occur when the chip is logically correct but malfunctions under certain conditions such as voltage temperature or frequency is there. voltage is voltage supply is not appropriate current drawing capability is not appropriate uh, frequency is you know fluctuating voltage is fluctuating temperature is very high so these are the things so so called uh, shmoo plots uh, can help to debug electrical failures you know uh, a shmoo plot is often made with a voltage one axis at one axis and speed on the other the test vectors are applied at each combination of the voltage and clock speed and success of this test is, test is recorded often only a set of vectors applied to a particular module so this is how you can do it uh 15.8 shows that so we are not going into the detail of shmoo uh, uh, faults and things so we have discussed today the logic verification and silicon debugging principle logic uh, verification principle and silicon debugging debugging principles in detail so you go ahead uh, with the you know uh, reading uh, at your end uh, you can see again i am telling this this is from book of uh, neil investi you can see and you can go and see and check Okay, thank you for listening and watching to this lecture.